ocean biodiversity is in dangerous decline. According to UNESCO, without significant changes, more than half of the world's marine species may stand on the brink of extinction by the end of this century. In Crete, marine biologists see dramatic changes that are likely to spread across the Mediterranean. The biodiversity, especially in uh, shallow ecosystems, is changing fast. We get fewer species that we used to have, and we also have newcomers. We have new species coming, and uh, new species establishing uh, year after year. We make a dive only to see an increasingly barren seafloor. A protected clam species, the noble pen shell, has disappeared over the last two years due to a fast-spreading disease combined with poaching. Half of seaweed canopies, a habitat for other species, are gone and the causes are not clear. The biologists take note, tracking these changes. You need to go there to see what is happening with the habitat. Yes, uh, for our work, the most important thing is to get in the water and observe how many species are there. So uh, if, let's say, in 10 years' time, we see a different picture, we know what the previous picture was, and this is very important to, to understand uh, what is happening. The researchers are collecting data for several EU-funded projects aiming to protect and restore European marine ecosystems. The underwater caves in Crete are rich with sponges and corals. Attached to the rocks, these animals can't escape stressful conditions. Observing their health, scientists write a clinical record of the sea communities. These images taken underwater are then analysed at the Institute of Marine Biology, Biotechnology and Aquaculture. Researchers use special software to trace and classify the species. We take photographs in such a way that we can later quantify the surface cover of the organisms. So uh, our aim is to be able to revisit caves in the future and see if there are changes in the benthic communities. We have some historical evidence here which is completely lacking from other parts of the world. And so by using the Mediterranean Sea with all these changes due to human activities, due to tourism, due to the increasing numbers of non-indigenous species, we can use it as a very good example in order to understand what is happening in other parts of the world. Samples are collected for genetic analysis that show whether the species are thriving or stressed and reveals the organisms that are too small to see. These European studies will help us better understand the causes of biodiversity decline, ranging from pollution and over-exploitation of marine resources to global warming. One of the experiments in the research tanks at the Crete Aquarium simulates the long-term climate change, demonstrating how warmer and more acidic water affects sea snails. The experiment we are doing here has to do with growth. We want to see the feeding behavior of the animal, the reproduction behavior. We want to see also interaction between prey and predator, how this will be influenced by the different uh, seawater conditions. If the concentration of the atmospheric CO2 continues to increase, the ocean will become more acidic and thus corrosive to the shells of many marine organisms. Climate change is very important uh, as a factor affecting biodiversity because if one species is affected, the whole balance will change. What we do here is an experiment for one animal, but this is uh, just the baseline for knowledge for all the marine animals. The acidified conditions make shells thinner and more fragile. Bad news for sea snails who can become an easy prey to predators as the climate keeps changing. Researchers use microcomputed tomography to visualize and accurately measure these effects. This uh, specimen is in uh, low pH conditions and you can see that there are transparent areas. So we can see that uh, we have less dense structures here. 
climate change is increasing uh, rapidly, uh, so maybe we, uh, the animals don't have the uh, evolution time to adapt to these new conditions, so maybe we will have massive mortalities. Jorgos, how do ports like this one affect marine biodiversity? Ports act like a getaway from a new species. So new species attached to the hull of the boats. And those boats, they can spread those species to new places. And when they establish a new place, they compete with the native species. And this is a problem. With no local predators, populations of so-called alien species can explode in numbers, displacing indigenous fauna. To monitor this and other problems, researchers use stacks of special plates deployed in 20 locations around Europe. After the stacks get colonized by small marine species over several months, researchers analyze them using genetic sequencing and other modern methods. Samples collected in Crete can also help other European researchers, such as this visiting biologist who studies a particular worm threatened in some parts of Portugal. Some uh, habitats of these species are disappearing, so these species can disappear and of course they are important to monitor because they provide food for fish, for other animals, so the ecosystem can in theory collapse because of uh, this. Even light pollution from the coasts might be harming small marine animals. To shed some light on this problem, researchers deploy special traps that attract species most affected by increasingly omnipresent electric lamps. The feeding behaviour of the animals could change. Uh, the relationships with the, between the species interactions could be changed because we affect the normal diurnal or nocturnal be behaviour. We want to protect the sea. We need to protect it because with this way we protect ourselves. I think it's very important for every biologist and for every human.